What's up guys? We're coming at you with an awesome video today. It's the top 11 worst pieces of keto dieting advice. And there are some really bad ones out there. Yes, there are. We crowdsourced some of them just to kind of see what you guys thought. We came up with like maybe half of them, but I would say this is a pretty comprehensive list. We thought a lot about this. Once you hear them all, you'll be like, oh, I have heard that piece of advice. Number one. So I'll hit them with the front double buys. Tripod, tripod, right there. Whew. Oh, you recording? We're going? Okay. Years in the fitness industry it's taught me a few things about uh, losing weight, total body recomposition, and the big one, that C word. What C word? What are you talking about? There's a C word that's bad for fitness? Calories, okay? They don't matter at all. You wanna know why they don't matter? Trust me, guys. Calories don't matter one bit. You probably heard sayings like, abs are made in the kitchen. That used to be true, but if you're doing keto, abs can be made at Old Country Buffet, OCB. Calories don't matter. You've probably heard this one frequently. It's like a weird thing that exists in the keto community. To me, it's like almost like the flat earth type of thing. Like it gives keto a real bad look in my opinion. Fact of the matter is calories matter equal on a keto diet as they do on a standard American diet. You can't just be eating whatever you want, whenever you want and expect to get shredded or expect to lose weight. There's a few studies that show like a very marginal caloric benefit to keto, like 100 calories or mm -hmm. so. Calories are what dictates weight loss. That's not to say the best way to lose weight is to just count calories and right. calorie restrict. The main benefit of keto for most people is that it's easier to calorie restrict. It's easier to eat the right amount of food. In that sense, I can somehow kind of see how you get to calories don't matter. Right. You're less hungry, you're yeah, gonna eat less. But they matter. Number two. Hey Chloe. I know that you know a lot about the keto diet. I do. Basically, can I say you know it all? Yeah, you can okay. say that. So I was just bringing in a little lunchtime snack. I'm gonna keep it small, I'm gonna keep it a little light. I'm gonna have four of these sausages. Four of these blood poisoning sausages? Let's check these ingredients the Blood out. poisoning? I thought it was good, it's meat. It's... Well, you never know. Everything is blood oh. poisoning until proven otherwise. That's a good philosophy to have. Thank you. We got brown sugar. Brown sugar, but the carbs are really low. Yeah, but it'll poison your blood. Not keto. I know I messed up yesterday. It's okay, it happens. Judge me. I have a yogurt here. This is, I ordered it online. It's from a special fancy keto yogurt company. I'm going to enjoy this for lunch. Keep it alive. Judging. Light. Let's look at these ingredients. Cultures. Active cultures. There's cultures? Not keto. Hey, Chloe. I think I'm going to, I have- Cellulose. Well, I have work to do. I'm going to go eat my lunch not over here. Not keto. I'm just gonna eat in the corner. I'm not doing anything with cellulose. No, no, no. You got the wrong picture. I'm doing keto. I I'm saw gonna... your foods. No, I'm gonna eat in the corner over not here. Not keto. So we've all heard the phrase, not keto. You know, a certain food being not keto because of a certain ingredient found in it. Because for me, being, being keto is any food you can consume and be in a state of ketosis. If you have a sausage that has dextrose in it, but it's zero grams of carbs or one gram of carb, I would say that's a keto friendly food. Some people would look at that and say, not keto. You can like scrutinize ingredients super hard if you want to. I think the best way to do it, just like a more realistic approach for the common folk is to just count carbs. Yeah. Like worry about the carbs, don't worry about specific ingredients, unless you want to like avoid gluten or soy or things like that. Cause there's certain foods that will have those in them that can still be part of a keto diet. Yeah, and then there's a lot of ingredients like carrots, for example, or tomatoes that people will say, those are not keto, why would you ever eat those? But if you're just tracking your macros or you're counting that into your daily carb count for the day, then there shouldn't be an issue where it's like, carrots are banned from my house. Number three. Hey guys, Chip Lawson here, lifetime natural professional bodybuilder. You're probably thinking, I'm in the kitchen all day, I'm eating chicken, I'm eating rice, I'm eating broccoli, I'm pushing heavy weights. That's wrong. I barely lift weights. I never step foot in the kitchen. The key to both building muscle and losing fat simultaneously, it's gonna be intermittent fasting. Have you heard of that? So there's actually a big misconception. It's been going around for about 100 years now in the fitness industry. There's the old line of thinking. You gotta exercise a lot. You gotta eat healthy. And that is how you lose weight and gain muscle. 
That's not true. Actually, there's a lot of data that's been shown uh, lately. Um, you can look up, there's a lot of studies on it. Uh, when you're doing intermittent fasting, that's all you have to do because the human growth hormone skyrockets, right? It's just like through the roof, okay? You don't even have to lift weights. Fat loss, you're probably thinking, oh, I want to lose fat. You don't have to control what you eat just as long as you do it in an eight hour window. Cake, back on the menu. You burn more calories if you do intermittent fasting. Honestly, there's like thousands of proposed benefits to intermittent fasting that I don't think are true. There are definitely some great benefits to fasting. Losing more weight isn't one of them. There's been a ton of studies that show this. If you eat 2000 calories and you're doing intermittent fasting, or if you eat 2000 calories and you're not doing intermittent fasting, weight loss, the change in weight at the end of X amount of days is gonna be the exact same, 100% identical. Again, kind of like number one, if you're doing intermittent fasting, you're probably just naturally going to eat a little bit less or it's like a little bit easier to reduce your calories. So that is one benefit. But if you're controlling for calories, it doesn't make a huge difference. Number four. All right guys, we're coming at you from the prove it headquarters and we got our top salesman with us jimmy and he has the top product on the market right now you want this stuff come here jimmy so my friends call me jimmy but my patients call me free agent willie the prove it slinger Ooh. and that's what i am right now i'm not jimmy right now i'm willie the now you hear supplements a lot, you're like, hey, I'm wasting all my money on these supplements. I just need food. I don't need supplements. It's true. That's what used to be true, right? You have a operating system for your computer, right? Yes. You got Windows, you have the, the Macintosh I one. I have both. Which, so why not have a operating system for your body? That's where Keto OS comes point. in, right? That is where it comes in. You should have an operating system for everything. You start turning on your friends, you know, trying to make sales, sleep with your friends' wives just to make a prove it sale, do it. Jungle, jungle juice. juice. Jimmy's our top earner here. Do you wanna be a top earner? Head on over. You got okay. the jungle juice, you're good to go. Prove It is one of those companies sells the products at a really high marked up price and has these crazy exaggerated claims like instant weight loss or eat a donut, eat this powder and you know, it didn't even happen. Number five. Been trying some new things with my diet lately, just gonna make sure it's all working out. What would you put me at? I'd say I'm about a, a, at a 1.7. Using P-strips and like relying on them to tell you your ketone levels or like how you react to specific foods. We get this pretty regularly, like someone will eat a Quest bar and, and then, then do pee. a pee test. It's just so, it, it doesn't correlate whatsoever. Pee strips, they're pretty useless. Uh, the one use for them is when you're first starting keto mm -hmm. to know if your body is or is not producing ketones. Number six. Cheat meal looks amazing. Ugh, oh, once a week and I get to enjoy this? And it doesn't even matter. It doesn't, doesn't ruin my keto state at all. I got the jungle juice. Take your cheat meal, you pour some jungle juice on, and I'm just eating a big bowl of fat burning ketosis. Ketone to cover up cheat meals. I think there's a, probably a high percentage of people that actually do this though. It doesn't do that at all. It puts your body back into a state of ketosis, but that doesn't mean like it doesn't have to work through all the, you carbs know, the you chocolate cake that you ate. Yeah. It's similar to like spraying sweat on your body to simulate working out. So your body knows it ate chocolate cake. It has to process those carbs. It has to digest them. Ketones are energy. So you just had a chocolate cake. That's a lot of energy. You're giving your body more energy but if you take a ketone test the number is going to be high so there's that number seven so dinner what am i gonna have today want to have something really low carb i think i want to have zero carbs so i'm just gonna have a bag of lettuce and uh this onion i'm just gonna eat it like an apple but it's not because it's zero carbs because veggies don't count as carbs that's my zero carb dinner. Carnivore diet, don't count carbs from veggies. Our philosophy is if you eat something, it counts. Especially if you are tracking for the purpose of a goal. Number eight. Hey Francis, Yeah. how's it going? Oh, uh, it's going okay, pretty good, same as usual. So I'm starting this new thing. You're doing keto? I love new things. Mm -hmm. It is keto. Okay, tell me your macros, macro breakdown. What are you doing? So I'm gonna do 150 grams of fat. Okay. 80 grams of protein. Okay. 
Yeah. And then 20 net carbs. Now, let me just ask you something real quick here, okay? Um, you're going to do 150 grams of fat. Yeah. But then I kind of like go down here to the midsection area. Uh huh. And I grab something and I'm like, and that's that's 80 something. to 90% fat right there. So let's okay. let's just think about this logically, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to lose fat. Yeah. You want your body to burn fat, right? Right. So does it make a whole lot of sense to be eating 150 grams of fat when you got 7,000 grams of fat? So basically, it's just a saying, we, a lot of the boys say it. Uh, if you have a lot of fat to lose, uh -huh. you don't need to eat a lot of fat. You're already fat, so you don't need to eat high fat. My favorite one. It's the worst one, the most egregious one. And it's like super common. This is like the probably the number one thing we get. I, I, I hear that since I'm trying to lose weight, I don't need to eat a lot of fat. Since I'm trying to lose fat, I don't need to eat a lot of fat. Like, they're both the word fat, so that means they're the same thing. I already have a lot of stored energy, so I don't need to eat a lot of, of energy, right? So calories. That's the actual phrase that makes sense. You still want to eat high fat, you just want to reduce your overall calories. Right. So like, I want to lose body fat, but I also feel really good when I'm eating 75% plus fat. So I still do that. So I'm still feeling really good and I can still work towards my goals. Number nine. Hey baby. Hey, oh. how's it going? I know you know a lot about like sugar alcohol I do. and stuff. So I'm just trying to like do the math, run the numbers on these. Just give me a simple rule. Just give me like a quick one. What would you say if you had to just blanket statement sugar alcohol? Count half of all. Okay. Half of all. That's it. Any advice that puts all sugar alcohols in the same basket is basically bad advice because there is, maltitol is a thing that exists and it's just as bad as sugar. Mm -hmm. Erythritol is also same category, sugar alcohols, doesn't impact your blood glucose at all. Very opposite things. And if you're just counting them for the same, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, yeah, it's probably harder. It's easier if there's just a rule. And we also have the video, uh, I'll link it below, where we test all the different sweeteners and the blood glucose response to those. When it comes to your body and figuring things out, I don't think you need things dumbed down. I think doing your research, testing things out for yourself, and just learning is only gonna make your life better. Number 10. First off, I just wanna say thanks to everyone for coming. The 19th annual meeting of Clever Marketers is now in session, so. One second. We... Sandy, are you taking minutes for the meeting? So, Clever Marketing, let's popcorn a little bit. Um, <sighs> fat burner pills. How does that, like, what do you think? Let's, come on, let's spitball a little bit. Uh, fat burners. Yeah. Um, Powerade. Uh, you know, like soul suckers. I don't know. I thought we were just popcorning here. Oh, I got one. You know how people are starting to do low carbs and stuff? Yeah. Marketing term net carbs. So they yeah. think they're not eating carbs, but it is carbs. But it doesn't matter because they're not eating carbs. It's a net carb. So you only care about net carbs? You know what? Don't put plans under microscopes, just net carbs. Okay, I like it. Net carbs are invented by marketers. Clever marketers. This is one of my favorite ones. Net carbs were, I don't know if they were even like invented. It's always been a thing. I think maybe the term net carbs is newer, but like available carbohydrates is what the rest of the world uses on their nutrition labels. In America, we basically have the fiber is added to the total carb count. Mm -hmm. They don't do that in like Europe. They list net carbs on the total carbs. Fiber does not act the same way as like a sugar or a starch, other forms of carbs in your body. So if you want to get like more of an accurate picture, that's why you would use net carbs. Some cases where it's definitely more of a gray area is where companies like Quest, Power Bar companies that are spiking the bars essentially with soluble corn a fiber or just like fibers that are industrially produced in a factory and then they're like adding them to the bar. That's more of a gray area. If you're eating whole foods, net carbs definitely is the right way to go. If you're venturing into the more like experimental foods, like the not real foods, then be more cautious. Number 11. Whoa, baby. 1.1 is my first test. What's the phase? I thought One, this was good. 1.1 you said? Yeah. You're not quite in the 
Me and the boys call it the optimal ketone range. What's optimal? I mean, you're basically not even doing the diet right. Okay. You're not burning fat. You're not fat adapted. You're not mobilizing fat cells. What's the range? Fat burning, you know, ketones, fat burning. You're not doing any of that stuff. The optimal ketone range. You've probably heard like a lot of people say what the optimal ketone range is and it's been different every time. I've seen right? graphs. Yeah. I think it's usually like 1.5 to 3.0. If you put a bell curve on a graph, I believe you. Me too. But then people will say otherwise, right? And then we heard a lot of speeches um, at conferences where they say like, is there even... Anyone proposing an optimal ketone range seems to be like just people saying things. Like we've had ketones from zero to like seven, basically 7.0. And I don't feel like I'm ever more in an optimal range. I, I could say the same. We've been doing it for so long. Sometimes I feel really good and I'm like, I want to test my ketones because I'm feeling great and I want to see what the number is. So maybe I can start correlating it. It doesn't really ever correlate for me, I would say. So I think maybe the optimal ketone range is like derived from people that are actually in uh, like a therapeutic- Using it for medical reasons? Yeah, like a prescribed keto diet and they're shooting for a certain range to help mitigate like their epilepsy symptoms. Right. So I think if you're like a healthy person and you're trying to apply optimal ketone range because you're thinking fat burning, everyone's always thinking fat That's burning. That's the disconnect. You yeah. think higher ketone ketones means fat more burning. fat loss. For, there's no correlation, there's no direct connection. So don't just look at the meter and be like 2.0, I'm gonna lose so much fat today. Here's a really good test. If you wanna get super high ketones and not lose any weight, you just have to eat like two sticks of butter a day. Two to three sticks. Just only eat that. Your ketones the next day are gonna be like 12 and you won't lose weight. All right guys, that is the 11 worst pieces of keto advice. Definitely comment below. Yeah. Let us know the advice that we missed. You've either adhered to and realized it's totally wrong. Best actor award. Okay, well that's nonsense <laughs> because everyone loves you and you're, you're so much better at acting. I get nervous. That a tree will fall over. That's true. Okay. All, All right, right guys. guys. Bye.